Greetings, world. Greetings, Amazon people. Uh, so, yeah. So, 100,000 user load test in less than 10 minutes. Show of hands, who has actually ever been inside BlazeMeter and seen the UI? OK, we've got a handful. OK. Uh, who would be willing to go look at the UI if it cost them actually nothing to open an account? Oh, more hands, good. OK, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to talk really quickly about why we built BlazeMeter in the first place. And then I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a really large load test using JMeter. Uh, uh, which you could never really do uh, on your own without some tools. So let's do it. So the first thing I want to point out here is that um, BlazeMeter was born along with DevOps, right? So if you look at, uh, this is the DevOps keyword on, on Google, interesting in DevOps. And we were born just as it was starting to take off. So we're not a solution that puts DevOps in their marketing or DevOps in their latest campaign. We're actually built to solve a DevOps problem. So it's like in our blood, right? And a big part of that was also really being part of open source. And, and you know, you might ask, well, why open source performance testing? And th the deal is that uh, some things are going on in the world, which is that developers are taking more control of what they were doing, or teams were shifting out to the edge and, and not wanting to be dependent on a central organization to do their testing. And so they actually just went out and got open source stuff. It was easy. They could just grab it. This is zero friction self-service. They could just go get it and start using it. Download and start. Learn the stuff on YouTube. Spin it up in a public cloud or in their own lab. And there's an open market of shared knowledge plugins and design patterns, right? Very open sharing market. People create plugins. It's not, a, it's not behind a paywall. You don't have to actually convince somebody to buy something to use these tools. And it's free, which obviously uh, uh, was helpful. Um, it's free, though, kind of free like a puppy, which is that uh, uh, it was free, but if you wanted to scale it up, that took some work. If you wanted to have reporting you could share with other people, that took some work. So there were some gaps, right? So one of them is provisioning. How do you tell JMeter to leap up onto AWS, bring up 100 instances of itself or 1,000 instances of itself, combine all the reports and bring the data back? It would take some work, right? Reporting. How do I bring that data together? How do I collaborate? Like, how do I share with other people? And then test management. How do I reliably go look at every build and see what the test looked like between builds every time I did a build or a code commit? How do I make sure I've got that data handy, right? And then there's things that are just out of scope for what, what JMeter had that, we, that, that could be added in. And then what if I wanted commercial support? So this is the gap that BlazeMeter uh, fills, right? So what BlazeMeter is basically, basically taking open source technology and making it enterprise grade. You know, enterprise features and integrations with like APM tools for monitoring, uh, for getting the back end uh, data, reporting and scalability, the ability to share with colleagues in a secure way. Um, security, uh, support, having somebody you can call. And it's not just JMeter. We actually su provide support for Locust, Gatling, JMeter, Selenium, and our own tool, Taurus, and other open source tools as well. So, but you've all come for this. Let's do 100,000 user load test in less than 10 minutes. OK, so let me pop up a fresh screen. So in I go to BlazeMeter, and I say, I want to create a test. And the type of test I want to create is a J, whoops, sorry, wrong screen. Be useful if you could see what I'm talking about. I think that's fair. OK, let's make it bigger. No, 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 no. I, I can maximize the screen. I want to make the fonts larger for you as well. Whoops. All right. Clearly, you can see that. I've made my life a little interesting here. OK, so uh, here's a test configuration screen. And most of this is intelligent defaults you can just leave alone. And I can either drag and drop or navigate to my JMeter file. In this case, I get this guy right here. And I've created a JMeter file. We have tools for making it easier to create JMeter files. We have tools for making it possible to not even create a JMeter file and still run a, a, a test. But in this case, um, I actually want to run a really big test. So um, I'm going to do a little something. And I'm going to say I want 144 JMeter instances to each run 800 users on them. And that's going to give me something a little bit north of 10,000 or 100,000, rather. And I'm going to give it a name. It's a big test. OK. So uh, and I'm going to save it. 
All right, we're good to go. Now I can just come over here and click Start Test, and it's going to bring all that stuff up for me. Now, in the true spirit of a cooking show, what's happening here is it's actually now going out and spinning up instances, but we actually want to get right along and see what that's going to look like. Sorry, let me get rid of this window. I switched strategy right before we started our demo, which was kind of toxic. Give me one second here. Two, two, two. So, All right. now we're where I wanted to be. That way I can actually look at the screen like you can look at the screen, right? All right, so this is a test that I fired up right before we got started here. And what I did was I, I actually built a JMX that deliberately would sort of lead to some circumstances. And in fact, let me, uh, let me jump to another one. So... Right, here's what I wanted to show you. So wh what I've done here is that I've actually launched the test. The blue line is the ramping up of the users, right? So it ramped up all the way up to uh, 115,000 users. And the green line is the hits per second. Now you might think, well, that's kind of odd. The users were ramping up, but the green line actually drooped over and fell down. Anyone want to wager a guess what happened? Yeah, so we overloaded the, basically, over here, we have the response time. And it was looking really great. And I can hover over here. And um, so I am not sure why my screen is behaving strange with me. Here we go. So I can hover over here, and I can see that we were doing pretty well up to about 99,000 uh, users. And once we passed that point, we started to raise our, our, uh, our response times, and it actually just got crazy. It just kind of kept going up. You really don't want your response time to go up during the middle of a test. You want it to be sideways, right? You actually want to say that the users have arrived, and I met the requirements, and but when the response time goes up, by definition, the same number of users taking longer to get things done will do more, fewer hits, right? And so you're actually delivering less value to the world because you're slow, right? So this is makes, makes it possible for anybody, not just somebody who has a big test harness or something, to be able to scale up to a really large test and prove that their solution is ready for prime time. And obviously, a web page is super easy to test, but we make it easy to test mobile apps as well. Just run that mobile app through our recorder. It will capture the traffic. And then you can build a JMeter script from that. And at and, and this point, you're basically emulating the same load that a lot of mobile users were doing. For instance, the Amazon app, you're all, those many of you are using here, you'd be able to run the same thing. Okay? So I just wanted to show you that it's really easy to, to um, and if we go back, here's the test we started, right, at the beginning, uh, at the beginning when I kind of, before I switched. So this is still ramping up. Um, this is actually, um, Let's cruise over to the timeline report here. And we can see that we're, uh, we're up to 17,600 users. And things are going pretty well. The leading edge of this is always going to be a little bumpy. This is the data still coming in from these, from these uh, uh, hits. But you can see the response time is pretty consistent here. It's looking pretty good. And what's going to happen as we get up to a little higher load here is, yep, here we're going to go. So, so keep an eye on things. Remember, the leading edge is, is, is kind of the evolving data as it comes in. But we're going to see as we get ramped up uh, that the response time is going to start to spike and the uh, green line is going to start to drop. Okay? And uh, I wish I had a fast forward button. In a, a YouTube video, you can fast forward it. But that's what's going to happen. So any questions about, like, is it clear that what we've done is to make it, we want to democratize. We want to make it so it's easier for anybody to get their hands on a testing tool and run tests of any size. And even though we're using JMeter, which doesn't really scale beyond, say, 10 or 15 servers at the most, um, we're actually running 144 of them here and harnessing them back for real-time data and real-time control. I could actually change uh, the behavior during a test if I wanted to.